What if I told you that one of the deadliest weapons in dinosaur history wasn't a jaw full of teeth, but a tail? Imagine an animal so heavily armored it looked like a medieval tank, swinging a bone-crushing hammer at anything that dared to attack it. This is the story of the Ankylosaurus, a dinosaur so heavily armored it carried its very own war club. At the end of its massive plated body swung one of nature's greatest inventions, a tail weapon so unique, so devastating, that it transformed a slow-moving plant eater into one of the most dangerous herbivores in history. Now, Ankylosaurus wasn't fast. It wasn't clever. It didn't stalk prey or disappear into the shadows. Instead, it lumbered through the late Cretaceous around 66 million years ago, moving slowly across a landscape ruled by monsters. This was a world dominated by apex predators like Tyrannosaurus rex and Albertosaurus, predators that could crush bones and tear through flesh in seconds. To most herbivores, facing such giants meant running or dying, but Ankylosaurus didn't run. At first glance, this dinosaur seems like it had very little going for it. Its vision was likely nothing special, its brain wasn't large or complex, and it lacked the camouflage that other species use to blend into their environment. Yet, against all odds, Ankylosaurus didn't just survive, it thrived. So how did it manage to hold its ground in such a hostile world? The secret was its body. Evolution transformed Ankylosaurus into a living tank, with thick rows of bony plates called osteoderms covering its back and flanks, spikes protecting its sides, and even armored eyelids shielding its face. But the real masterpiece of this design wasn't just its armor, it was the massive bony tail club, a natural warhammer unlike anything else the world had ever seen. This tail wasn't flexible like the whip-like tails of sauropods such as Diplodocus, nor was it simply defensive like the spiked tails of Stegosaurus. Ankylosaurus had something far more specialized. The back half of its tail was stiff and reinforced, its vertebrae tightly fused, its tendons hardened into bone. All of this created a rigid handle, allowing it to swing its heavy club with devastating power. Paleontologist Victoria Arbor, who has dedicated years to studying ankylosaurs, explains that without this reinforced structure, a swing that powerful would have torn muscles or dislocated bones inside the animal. But in Ankylosaurus, the system was perfectly engineered. The result was a weapon capable of crippling even the mightiest predator with a single, well-placed strike. Think about it. A T-Rex might have been the ultimate predator with the strongest bite force of any land animal in history. But one wrong move, one step too close, and Ankylosaurus could shatter its leg in an instant. For a predator, that could mean the difference between ruling the food chain or starving. In the grand story of dinosaurs, Ankylosaurus stands out as proof that survival isn't just about speed or intelligence. Sometimes, the best strategy is to turn yourself into an armored fortress and carry a weapon so powerful that even the fiercest hunter has to think twice. And this is only the beginning. Because the more we look at Ankylosaurus, the more questions arise. How did such a weapon evolve? What role did it play in daily life? Was it only for defense or did these dinosaurs also fight each other with their clubs? To answer these questions, we have to dive even deeper into the anatomy, behavior, and incredible evolutionary history of the most famous armored dinosaur of them all. Ankylosaurus didn't need speed, brains, or camouflage. It had something far more intimidating, a built-in sledgehammer swinging at the end of its tail. This weapon wasn't just for show. It made one of the slowest herbivores of the Cretaceous into one of the hardest to kill. And fossils reveal that these clubs weren't only for defense. Some ankylosaurs, like Zool, show signs of healed injuries that match the damage a tail strike would cause. But here's the twist. Those wounds weren't left by predators. They came from other ankylosaurs. That means these animals weren't just swinging at T-Rex. They were turning on each other in violent contests, clubbing rivals in battles over territory or mates, not unlike giraffes slamming necks or rams crashing horns today. But weapons like this don't just appear overnight. They were the result of a long evolutionary story, 
stretching back over 100 million years. If we rewind to the early Cretaceous, around 130 million years ago, we meet Gastonia, an early ankylosaur relative. Its tail was flexible, bristling with spikes, good for keeping smaller predators at bay, but nowhere near the crushing force that would come later. Jump forward about 40 million years, and ankylosaurs like Gobasaurus in Asia were starting to change the formula. Their tails grew stiffer, reinforced by fused vertebrae and bony tendons. They still lacked a heavy club, but now their tails worked more like solid bats, capable of delivering serious impact. By around 75 million years ago, species such as Pinacosaurus took it one step further. At the tip of their tails, clusters of fused osteoderms formed the first true clubs, dense, bone-packed knobs that could deal crippling damage with every swing. Yet evolution didn't move in just one direction. While some ankylosaurs built war hammers, others, like the notosaurids, skipped the club entirely. They relied instead on spikes and armor, closer in style to the spiked tails of Stegosaurus than to the heavy bludgeon of Ankylosaurus. And then there's Steguros, a bizarre armored dinosaur from South America. Instead of a knob, it wielded a flat, blade-like structure at the end of its tail, something that looks more like a prehistoric axe than a club. Step by step, through millions of years, these creatures experimented with turning their tails into weapons. By the time Ankylosaurus arrived at the end of the Cretaceous, evolution had created its masterpiece, a tail club so powerful it could shatter bones and turn a predator's attack into a fatal mistake. In South America, evolution took a strange turn. Instead of developing a heavy club like Ankylosaurus, a small armored dinosaur called Steguros evolved something entirely different. A flat, blade-like tail, almost like a prehistoric sword. This unique weapon proves something important. The Ankylosaurus's tail club wasn't a random accident of evolution. It was part of a much bigger pattern. Nature repeatedly found ways to turn tails into weapons, though each species did it in its own way. But how powerful was the Ankylosaurus's tail club, really? Thanks to high-resolution scans and digital models of newly discovered fossils, scientists can finally measure its raw destructive force. A fully grown Ankylosaurus could swing its tail through a massive 100-degree arc, powered by thick muscles attached to a rigid handle of fused vertebrae and ossified tendons. This wasn't just for stability, it was built for maximum impact. Biomechanical studies show that the very tip of the club could whip through the air at nearly 60 miles per hour. That's about 100 kilometers per hour. When it connected, the impact force ranged between 7,300 and 14,400 newtons. To put that into perspective, that's more than enough to snap bones, shatter joints, and cripple even a predator as large as T-Rex. So, Ankylosaurus didn't just carry an intimidating weapon, it carried a tail hammer scientifically proven to be one of the most devastating blows in the animal kingdom. But the question remains, did they actually use it? The answer is yes, and the proof is written in fossilized bone. One of the clearest examples comes from Zul Kurivastator, whose name fittingly means the destroyer of shins. Paleontologists uncovered an incredibly well-preserved specimen of Zul, complete with skin impressions and its full armor still in place. But what drew the most attention were its hips. Several of the large spikes along its sides were broken and later healed. These weren't the marks of a predator's teeth. A T-Rex bite would have left deep punctures and torn flesh. Instead, the damage was consistent with blunt force trauma precisely the kind of injury you'd expect from the sideways swing of another ankylosaur's tail. This discovery tells us something remarkable. Ankylosaurs weren't just using their tails to ward off predators. They were also turning them on each other. These dinosaurs fought head-to-head -head in violent clashes, swinging bone clubs in battles for territory dominance or mates, just like giraffes clash necks or rams lock horns today. Far from being passive walking tanks, Ankylosaurs were active, social fighters, and their tail clubs weren't only weapons of survival, they were also weapons of rivalry. By the late Cretaceous, this evolutionary journey had reached its peak. 
after millions of years of experiments with spikes, rods, and knobs, Ankylosaurus finally carried the perfected Warhammer, one of the most iconic and brutal weapons nature has ever engineered. By the time of Ankylosaurus, the tail club was no longer an evolutionary experiment. It was perfected. From that point forward, the story wasn't about invention, it was about variation. Across the Ankylosaur family tree, evolution began to experiment with different shapes, sizes, and purposes for this weapon. Some species, like Anodontosaurus, carried broad, wedge-shaped clubs with a distinct central ridge, almost like a prehistoric sledge designed to crush bone on impact. Others, such as Diaplosaurus, developed smaller, narrower clubs. These may have been better suited for fast, precise strikes, or perhaps even ritual combat between rivals. In Tarkia, a Mongolian ankylosaur, we see an entirely different strategy, a wide, flat club paired with reinforced skull armor, turning not just the tail but the entire animal into a living battering ram. Each variation tells us something about how evolution works. These weapons weren't random. They were shaped by different pressures. The predators they faced, the environments they lived in, and even the social behaviors within their own species. Some clubs were built to injure and disable attackers. Others may have been used more for intimidation, swinging in displays of power that warned enemies or rivals to stay back. And while ankylosaurs went all in on tail clubs, their close relatives, the notosaurids, chose another path. They abandoned the club entirely, investing instead in massive spikes, heavy plating, and sheer bulk for defense. These weren't primitive forms or half-finished designs. They were specialized endpoints, different evolutionary solutions to the same problem, how to survive in a world filled with predators. The diversity of these weapons shows us just how creative evolution can be. Even a single idea, like a tail used for defense, can branch off into multiple directions, each one fine-tuned for survival in its own way. In the end of the Cretaceous, the Ankylosaur Tail Club had become one of the most extraordinary weapons nature ever engineered. From spiked whips to rigid rods, from small knobs to massive warhammers, evolution refined and reshaped this idea countless times. Each version was a testament to survival, proof that in a world ruled by predators, sometimes the best defense really is the best defense. Ankylosaurus stood as the ultimate result of this long experiment, an animal so heavily armored, so perfectly armed, that even the mightiest hunters had to think twice before making a move. It wasn't fast, it wasn't clever, but it didn't have to be. With armor like a tank and a tail like a wrecking ball, Ankylosaurus carved out its place in history as one of the most iconic survivors of the dinosaur age. And yet, there's more to this story than just weapons and war. Because behind the armor, Ankylosaurus was still a living creature, an herbivore that needed food, water, shelter, and a place to raise the next generation. To truly understand its legacy, we have to step beyond the battles and look at its daily life, its world, and the role it played in the final chapter of the Age of Dinosaurs. Click on the video on your screen to keep enjoying our content. See you in the next video.